Hello and welcome back to another episode of Project Supercar. Now if you're new to my channel, I'm the chap who's built his own DIY supercar using an old Audi estate as a donor car. Now that I've pulled the wiring loom out of that donor car, we can do an episode on the electrics. Now the electrics on any DIY kit car build is going to be pretty complicated. In fact, electrics on all cars is pretty complicated nowadays considering all the ECUs and computer equipment that's fitted to them. I can't really do you a video going into everything regarding electrics, but I'm hoping I can give you a few pointers and I'll also show you how I adapted an Audi A6 C4 wiring loom into my DIY supercar. Of course, if you're going to build your own DIY supercar and you're going to use a normal car as a donor, you first have to pull this lot out, which is the loom or harness from your donor vehicle. And that's not always easy. And as we discovered uh, when we were pulling the motor out and kind of like stripping things out of here, it's really tricky to route this harness back through the firewall. If you look down in this area, there's just like, there's no room under here to get at anything. And uh, we've tried, well, we've unplugged it from the inside and we've tried like pulling it through the firewall, but it's just not budging. So we're not exactly sure how to solve this problem. Pete, have you done any more research on it or given it more thought? I searched the internet and there were no answers. So hmm. I think we're, uh, we're on our own on this. So you guys to. are gonna just follow along here as we try to figure this out. Well, just taking a look at this area here, we decided to, um, unbolt this bracket that holds the uh, ABS module here in this spot where we want better access. So we're thinking if we can kind of move this out of the way without tweaking any of the lines or whatever, we're gonna see if we can just buy ourselves a bit of room here. Considering there's so little space, like we would have to remove the, the whole like heater core AC blower motor assembly here. I had to already loosen it to just like get it to move a little bit further out so I could get at a lot of these uh, these wires. I feel like we just went deep sea fishing and we finally reeled in the big one. This thing is like a 20 pound Look harness. This harness. It is preposterous. You can see this is the engine bay side where the rubber grommet is. So this is all engine harness on the front side. This is that weird plastic yeah, clip, clip that foiled us for a while. Once we got that out, we thought, okay, we'll just pull it straight through. Except you've got your typical like harness that goes to the ECU and it's got like half a chassis harness attached to it too. And we thought, you know, there's got to be a plug in here somewhere to disconnect it, but nope, it is just built into the engine harness. And you know what it made it worse is these damn clips here yeah. are attached like underneath the heater core and yep. everything there. So getting oh, those off is a nightmare. This was not meant to come out without like pretty much stripping the inside of this car. It's like they think you're never going to change your engine harness or really service any of the electricals the way they've designed it. This is supposed to be a rally car. What? Like I... weird. Yeah, I'm really puzzled by it. In any case, this is an opportunity for us to send it to Ohm Racing and say, listen, make a disconnect here and maybe a disconnect yes. here as well. And then, you know, the engine harness just separates out cleanly. So uh, our deep sea fishing expedition, I think, has paid off in the sense that we'll be able to like make it serviceable, make it much cleaner. So we'll take a closer look at this loom shortly. But I think what we'll do is we'll go over the prototype and take a look at some of the wiring I used from the last donor car. Now much of this loom you see here is from an Audi A6 C4 and it follows pretty much the same pathway as on the original donor car. Now what I've actually done on this prototype is I've moved the engine wiring harness to the rear of the car and the rest of the wiring loom is pretty much laid out as the donor car. And that's not as difficult as you may think. The wiring harness from this engine is only connected to the rest of the wiring loom through a handful of connectors, like these. Now, I will bring the camera in shortly so you can have a look. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any real good photographs um, of this engine in the donor car. Um, just have a handful here, um, one from the side, one from the other side, and just a, 
um, front of the engine sort of shot, not, not great. So I think what I'll do is I'll show you the engine in the, uh, on the new donor car to give you an idea of how easy it is to move the engine from the front to the back. This V6 twin turbo is very similarly laid out as that 2.8 normally aspirated. You've got the wiring harness which is here which goes to the entire engine and it follows one sort of large loom here that goes into this box which is the ECU. And on the inside you've only got a handful of connectors. So you can transplant this entire lump to the rear of the car and all you have to do is connect these handful of connectors to the rest of the original wiring loom. Now what I did on the prototype is I went to a scrapyard, found another donor car and basically chopped these plugs out so that I've got two sets of plugs. So now all I have to do is make an extension loom from here to the wiring loom of the rest of the car which is now in the back of the car. Does that make sense? So all I had to do is move the ECU to the back of the car and these plugs and there are on this normally aspirated engine one, two, three, four, five plugs and that's it and this, this is connected to the front part of the wiring loom and the loom is ran down the inside of the car and all this wiring by the way, is, this is a prototype but all this wiring is protected inside the pod or nacelle of the car. I'll show you that now. This nacelle has been removed from the car so we can take a better look at it. On the inside you can see the bracket for the ECU and where these screw holes are holds another bracket that holds those connectors. Now this is obviously all made out of wood and it's just the plug but it will be made out of fiberglass and it will be weather protective. So in other words, rain shouldn't get into there. Now if we take a look at these connectors down here, these connectors are not really designed to be outside in all weathers. This is, these connectors are really internal connectors. So I didn't want to expose these to um, the cold and the sleet, rain, all that sort of stuff. So that's the reason why I have the nacelles either side of the car. Here's just a set of um, fuses which came from the original donor car. And I think what I can do is show you where some of this loom goes. That's the main wiring harness, goes to the engine, and then the rest of it is inside here. Again, this is all temporary. This is the prototype, don't forget. And there's some of the cabling there, and it just runs down the inside up to the corner there and I think we'll take a look at all this in greater detail. Now when I was designing this car I had safety in mind and also I needed an area to put some of these electric components and whatnot. So if you've been following along then you may know that I've put some crash protection into this car. Now, one of the areas that I wanted to protect is your feet. So, I thought if you were involved in an accident and this wheel was pushed back, I wanted a sort of crumple area, which is here. So this would be all fiberglass, okay, and there's a good six inches there before you hit the chassis. So, with the tyre, with this crumple zone here, you should have some protection in a moderate accident. I also thought this would be a good place to put the electrics. So let's take a look. Right, if you've been following along and you watch my episode on dashboards, then you'll know that in a modern car, the dashboard loom is now separate to the rest of the car and it is usually connected to the car in the footwell. So on both sides of the car you will usually find 
an area to plug these connectors into. And because I'm trying to design this kit car as a modular kit in the future, someone wanted to build their own, and they wanted to use different dashboards and that sort of thing, I needed to make this area large enough so that I could get these connectors in there so you can connect your dashboard to your wiring loop. Let's take a closer look. Okay, let's see if I can get the camera in on this bunch of connectors down here. Whoa, they're a bit tight. All right, let's get in there. Oh dear. Okay, that oh, looks a bit of a mess. I'm, okay. I'm hoping you can uh, see all this. Again, this is the prototype, okay, this is not the finished car, so anyone putting comments going, oh, this looks terrible. Yeah, I know, it's the prototype, okay, this is proof of concept. So, we have a um, plastic bracket here. This is straight from the original donor car, and a series of connectors. And these are in the same place as on the original donor car, and it's in the footwell in the original donor car. So, it all fits in there quite nicely. And as you can see, there's plenty of space in there to get more connectors or whatever you need to do. Yeah, I know it's a mess. This is what wiring is all about until you've finished it and until you've put some nice connectors in there and loomed it all up. But I'm hoping you get the idea. Now, of course, on the finished car, there'll be a nice piece of fiberglass here and covered in carpet, and you won't even see any of this but you can remove it quite quickly if you needed to get to some of the electrics. Let's take a quick look at the other side down there. Right, let me try and get the camera set up for you so we can take a look at this lot. Oh dear. Oh, oh, okay, there we go. Right. In there. Now, this is a terminal block at the top with some relays in there. This is from the original donor car and it's in roughly the same position as on that donor car. Now, down here, you'll see um, it's a. Let me just open it up. You do that. Take the lid off and we've got some more relays in there. Now this is actually half of the original fuse box, relay box from the original donor car. Um, because a lot of the relays are no longer needed, I was able to cut the fuse box in half and put half of it here. I mean, again, this is the prototype. I would not fit this in a finished car. I'd make a nice new fiberglass version. This is for prototyping. This is proof of concept stuff. So let me just put the lid back on. Claps it clips into place like so. So anyway, I just thought I'd show you that so you get the idea of the concept of this car. It is designed so you can fit any part from any donor car into this. Well, virtually. Hope you understand. Let's see if we can get out. Oh. Got one thing about supercars is getting in and out of them is a bit difficult. Now what we have here is the wiring loom from the Audi 2.7T donor car. It's not the whole loom because the dashboard loom isn't here and that lot over there which is probably just outside of a camera shot is for the front headlights, that sort of thing. And of course there's a wiring loom in each door and there's one in the rear hatch. But this is the loom that is inside the car body shell, if that makes any sense. And I think I might have to bring the other camera in and explain what's going on. Right, let's take a closer look at this loom from an Audi A6 2.7T. Now, here's some bits and pieces from the passenger side footwell. So there's a plastic bracket here with some connectors, some of the loom here, 
This obviously goes across the engine tunnel for where the gearbox is. And now we're on the driver's side. And if we take a look at this, we have some more connectors that goes in the footwell and we have some fuses and relays. Now, let's go down here. We have, this is for the airbags. This has to be removed. Now this is a problem with this particular wiring loom is the, it looks like the airbag and the ABS system is part of the overall loom. So I'm gonna to have to strip that out. And of course, what we do have is we have front doors and we have rear doors. So I think, here we go. What we got here? Yeah, this is for the rear door. Now, it may surprise you, I actually wanna keep these, or at least the, the circuit. I wanna keep the circuit for the rear doors. And I think I'll show you why in a sec. But um, yeah, so this loom will have to be stripped. I'll have to remove all the stuff I do not need, which will be ABS and the stability control and the airbags. And then the rest of it should work. Hello, yes, and I'm time travelling again, which means only one thing, I've made this episode way too big, so what I'm going to do is make it a two-part episode, so I'm going to call this one done, and catch me again in part two, which should be tomorrow, and we'll go over why I actually need a wiring loom for a four-door car to go onto this supercar that only has two doors.